I'm very honored to be here and to give this talk and share some of our 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 research um, aims in the lab, which is to analyze the epidemiological and the functional impact of HPV genetic heterogeneity, which is a, a research area for which I have been studying since my master degree. But uh, we, well, I'll show you some data that we had by that time and also more recent data to complement this. So uh, as Georgia told you, I am located at the Cancer Institute in the city of Sao Paulo. Our building is here in the map. And we are part of the Hospital of Clinics from the University of Sao Paulo. The, universe, the Faculty of Medicine of the University in Sao Paulo is here. And we are the part of the Hospital of Clinics that is totally dedicated to cancer research. To cancer, so this is a hospital. We have we are in this very beautiful building. This is a twenty three floor uh, building. It's a hospital, and we are over four thousand employees in this hospital. In the eighth floor, it's located the Center for Translational Research in Oncology, and this is where all groups uh, that are dedicated to basic science are. So this is our building during uh, the campaign for the prevention of, of, of breast cancer. It's very beautiful. So since, uh, uh, since, long, since I started my career, I have been interested in, in, the, the, in the study of HPV. HPV stands for human papilloma virus. And this virus is associated with almost all cervical and anal canal cancers. So they respond for over 90% of cancers at these anatomical sites and for a, a less extent of cancers at other anogenital regions like the vulva, the penis, and the vagina. And it's also associated to the development of oropharyngeal cancer. And this ranges, uh, this is uh, varies extensively in the globe where uh, autopharyngeal cancers associated to HPV infection are more prevalent in the United States and in Europe in comparison to other parts of the world. So the burden of HPV-associated cancers yearly is about 700,000 cases per year, and the majority of these cases occurs in the undeveloped world and developing countries, where 80% of these cases are observed. So this is a very important uh, health uh, health issue, and for which now we have a vaccine, a prophylactic vaccine, and so we are able to eliminate these diseases. So um, HPV 16 and other 12 HPV types are, are considered carcinogenics to human, are considered carcinogens type 1s, uh, in the association with cervical cancer. And there is sufficient evidence, epidemiological and biological evidence, to consider these viral types uh, associated to the development of cervical cancer. However, HPV-16 is the is all, uh, responds for the majority of eight of HPV-associated cancers at other extracervical cancer sites, uh, including the oropharynx. So this is uh, HPV-16 is very prevalent not only in the normal population, I mean normal uh, with normal smears, but also in uh, disease samples. So HPV-16 uh, is a small virus. It, it here I show the particle of the viral. It has about uh, 50 hundred nanometers. And it, this is an unenveloped virus that is composed by a, a protein, a proteic capsid that is composed by L1, LL2 proteins that are uh, coated by the virus. And it englobes a double-stranded circular uh, molecule of about 8,000 pair base. The genome is divided in three regions. It's the long control region, which does not code for any protein, but it's very important because it contains uh, binding sites for viral and cellular transcription factors that regulate replication and transcription, an early region and a late region. And the designations of early and late corresponds uh, to the phase of the viral cycle in which these proteins are expressed. E6 and E7 proteins are considered oncogenic proteins because they play a critical role in driving cell cycle entry for viral to, 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 
they they need the cells need to be in cycling in the cell cycle so there is a genome amplification but if there is a dysregulation of the expression of e6 and e7 this may lead to cellular transformation so this is why this these proteins are considered viral uh, oncoproteins so in this slide i show the natural history of hpv infections and this is a, uh, the history at the cervix, but it may be translated to the anal canal and also to the oral pharynx. And so uh, women are exposed to an HPV infection and the highest prevalence of HPV infection in women is observed in young women that uh, coincident with the initiation of the sexual debut of these women. So risk factors are associated to sexual activities like having multiple sex partners, early sexual debut, high parity, and no syncocision. Most of the infections, they clear within one or two years, but however, some infections may persist for a longer time and may lead to the development of, of, of cervical lesions then low-grade squamous lesions, high-grade squamous lesions, and finally cervical cancer. And this may take over 20 years to happen. So as of most associated uh, cancers, of cancers associated to viral infections, it takes a lot of time to develop the cancer. And this is associated to viral factors like HPV variability, which I'm going to go through in more details, but also to host factors and the microenvironment. So to date, over 200 HPV types have been fully characterized and sequenced. So uh, these are considered genotypes because uh, the classification of HPV types relies on HPV sequence variability. And here it's shown a uh, phylogenetic tree, which was constructed based in the sequence of the L1 late gene. You remember, as I told you, L1 codes for the, for the major protein of the capsid, and this is a very conserved gene. So we can observe that HPV clusters within five different genus, that is alpha, mu, nu, gamma, and beta papilloma virus. And here shown in red are those HPV types that are classified by the ARC as carcinogenic to humans. So we see that they cluster together. These smaller groupments are considered a species and each of these are HPV types. So the classification in family, genus, species, and types relies on the sequence of the L1 gene, where HPV types are classified uh, whenever they have more than 10% divergence in the sequence of the L1 gene with all other HPV types known and characterized. However, since early 90s, it has been observed that HPVs, uh, within, there is an HPV intratype variability that is, if you analyze different isolates from different samples, you can see that there is small variations in the genome of these isolates. So HPV tribes, they also cluster within lineages and sublineages. But this classification, this taxonomic classification is based on the analysis of the whole genome where HPV lineages are uh, defined by one to 2% variability within the whole genome, and they are named after letters. So HPV 16A is a lineage of HPV 16. And sublineages are defined by 0 0.1, 0 0.5 to 1% divergence within the whole genome, and these are named after numbers. This is the modern nomenclature for uh, for HPV 16 variants. And in some slides, I'll, I will have to show you the, the old nomenclature. However, I will always make the correlation for make the for, to make the, the presentation more clear. So this was a very pioneer study that was conducted in the early 90s. You imagine that by that time, there was no automatic sequencing. Every, every sequencing was made by hands. And so in this study uh, performed in the group of, of Uli Bernard, which at the time was at the University of Singapore, they gathered together over 300 isolates 
from all over the world, from more than 25 different geographic region uh, countries. And they analyzed a small fragment of the LCR, and they used this fragment to construct a phylogenetic tree. So here is the phylogenetic tree of HPV-16 variants, and we can observe that this cluster within different uh, uh, branches. And these branches, they were named after the, the, uh, the origin of most of the isolates which compose these branches. So we can see here uh, an, two African branches, an Asian American branch, and two European uh, 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 branches, and also an, an Asian sublineage of the European branch. So uh, we see here in this slide the distribution of HPV-16 variant within the cervical, uh, within uh, cervical carcinomas. And we see that in the African continent, there is a high prevalence of African variants, which are now named C. But I will show you always when I talk about the associations, I will show you the, 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 the correlation with the modern nomenclature. I just want to make a point that the European variant, which is now considered an A lineage variant, was the first proto was the first HPV 16 isolates to be fully sequenced. And it's not considered a, a, a primitive uh, isolate, but it's considered the prototype because it was the first HPV-16 genome to be fully sequenced. And it was obtained from a German patient. So in Europe, we can see a high prevalence of European variants, and here are shown in green and in orange, and I will not go within details of this classification. And European variants are detected with high frequency also in other parts of the world. And uh, in the Asia, there is a high prevalence of Asian variants, which are now categorized as A4. And in the EU and in the uh, Americas, you can see that, uh, especially in, in Central and South America, we, we detect variants from all branches of geographical and phylogenetic rela uh, relation. And this, is, this uh, transduces into the history of the colonization of these countries. So this is the correspondence of HPV-16 variant classification. This is the modern nomenclature, and this is the old nomenclature. So as I told you, the European variant, uh, which was the first sequence to be fully sequenced, it clusters within the H1 sublineage. Asian variant is an A4 sublineage. African variants now are defined by B and C lineages and Asian American variants as D lineage. So uh, HPV intratype variability has been used successfully to study the phylogeny and evolution of this virus, but also it has been used as an important tool to better understand the natural history of HPV-16 infections because it was thought that uh, maybe some persistent infections by HPV-16 were, uh, were, were not classified as persistent, but this could be different transient infections by different variants. And we also sought to analyze if these genomes uh, isolate variants are associated to differences in the risk of, of, of leading to to clinical outcomes, to disease and cancers and et cetera. So by the time I was doing my PhD, uh, this study was being conducted uh, with the coordination of my supervisor at the moment, which was Luisa Villa. And this study was conducted uh, with also uh, the coordination of Dr. Eduardo Franco from the McGill University in Canada. So the Ludwig McGill cohort study was a prospective study which was conducted in women from Brazil. And these women were enrolled in Sao Paulo. It was a very important study. And in this study, over 2,500 women were followed for four years. And then there was an extension of this study. And uh, these women, they came for a visit of follow-up every four months in the first year of follow-up and every six months in the subsequent four years. So each, each visit, a, a sample a blood sample is drawn, in addition to, to cervical swabs, which were used not only for pap analysis to analyze the cytology to see if there were cervical alterations, because these women had to be 
at the at this baseline visits, these women had to be cytological normally. And also these pap smears were used to, to extract um, DNA to analyze different markers, viral and host markers. And for viral markers, these included HPV typing, assessment of viral load, and variant analysis for some of the HPV types. These women were also submitted to a questionnaire where we were able to collect information, sociodemographic, smoking, and, and other uh, characteristics associated to reproductive health and sexual behavior. So uh, all HPV-16 positive samples from this study uh, were separated for variant analysis, and they were sequenced a fragment also of the LCR to categorize these variants. And so there were eight, 187 women who had at least one positive smear uh, that was positive for HPV-16. We, here, there is, uh, I show the prevalence of each, of each lineage variant, and we see that most of these variants cluster within the A1, A2 uh, lineage, which were previously named as European. We also see that uh, there was about 25% of these women which had a, 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 an infection by other lineage variants, including D1, D2 lineage, the African variants and Asian variants. So this correlates with the high admixture level of our population. So uh, we also performed analysis of the HPV-16 variants and the risk for cervical lesions because some of these women develop low grade and high grade lesions during the study. They entered the study with normal smears, but during the time of the study, they developed uh, cervical lesions. So we did this analysis at different time points, including two years of follow-up, five years of follow-up, and the entire follow-up. And taken as a reference, HPV negative women, which considered the reference, we see that women infected with high risk types and also with HPV 16, they were at a higher risk to develop uh, cervical lesions in comparison to HPV negative women. When we, when we stratify the HPV 16 infection by the different variants, we see that non-lineage variants, so that is non-European variants, were associated to an even higher risk of developing cervical lesions. So we showed for the first time, we were pioneering showing prospectively the association between HPV-16 variants and the development of cervical disease. In, then following this study, in other studies conducted in other admixture populations in North America, Costa Rica, and Mexico, we also uh, observed that non-European non -European variants, that mean non-lineage variants, were associated to a higher risk of, of, of of cervical disease. And they were also more prevalent in cervical cancer in comparison to a lineage variants. So most recently, uh, this is a study conducted by Lisa Marambello at the NCI and the National Cancer Institute in the United States. This study uh, was uh, HPV-16 variant classification was based on whole genome sequencing. And they analyzed uh, over 3000 women and similar to our studies, uh, similar observations were, were, were obtained even when analyzing the whole genome. So here I show the odd ratios for different disease outcomes, that is high-grade cervical lesion, squamous cell carcinoma, adenocarcinoma in situ, and adenocarcinoma. And these are the different lineages. So in comparison to the A1 lineage, which is Previously denominated the European, they also observed that, that Asian uh, uh, variants and Asian American variants are associated to a higher risk of all of these lesions. So very similar to what we observed before, but this was uh, based on a on whole genome sequencing. So regarding women, we can conclude that globally HPV sixteen variant distribution is uneven and varies with the admixture level of the population. And we also show together with other studies that A4 and D2, D3 variants are 
at a higher risk of cervical lesion development in comparison to women infected with the A1 and A2 variants, prevalence defined as European, and also with increased risk of adenocarcinoma. So what about men? So uh, uh, the study of HPV natural history in men was uh, was conducted uh, at, um, more recently in comparison to studies in women. And so we recently performed a, a, a systematic review followed by meta-analysis in which we observed that there were only very few studies uh, regarding the HPV-16 viability in men. And furthermore, these studies were only uh, restricted to very few samples. So we decided to analyze in more details the HPV intratype uh, variability impact upon the natural history of HPV infection in men. That is the association to persistent infection, which is uh, necessary for the development of genital disease, and also to association with disease outcome in men. So we took advantage that the HIM study was also uh, was also being conducted in Sao Paulo. This was a study. The HIM study stands for HPV in men. This was one of the most important studies conducted worldwide to, uh, to analyze the natural history of HPV sixteen infection in men. This was a prospective multi center international study, and women were enrolled in three different countries. This is study, the PI of this study is Dr. Anna Giuliano, which is based at the Adrian Moffitt Cancer Center and Research Institute in, uh, in Tampa, Florida. So this is a cohort uh, which uh, were enrolled over 4,000 men, uh, 105,000 men at each geographical region. And these men were enrolled uh, between 2005 and 2009. They were followed for uh, for up to four years, and every and these visits of follow up were conducted at every six months. And also, these men completed a, a, a self minister co uh, questionnaire, so we could see the sexual and sociodemic risk factors that could be associated to the different uh, outcomes of infection and of disease. So we collected exfoliated cells from the genital region and also from the anal canal. And also in this study, a gargle sample from the oral cavity was also collected. And so HPV was assessed by a protocol of PCR followed by reverse line hybridization. And all HPV-16 variant uh, positive smears were separated to analyze the variants. So we initially, so what we did in this study is that HPV positive samples were, uh, DNA was extracted and they were submitted to a PCR to analyze a fragment of the LCR, which contains sufficient uh, polymorphisms that we are able to define all classified variants. So I'll first show you uh, some analysis which we conducted regarding the anal canal. And uh, so uh, this analysis was based in 227 samples, which were collected for 124 men. And so we can observe uh, that regarding the population, most of the men which were HPV-16 positive were young men with a, a mean age of 30 years. Most of these men were single. They reported over 12, 12 years of, of education, reported being non-smokers. And only regarding uh, the race, there were some differences in the in, between countries because uh, most men uh, from Mexico, they classified themselves as Mexican and Hispanic. We also see some difference regarding the, the sexual orientation. Whereas most men from the US and Mexico reported being men who have sex with women, and men from the Brazil reported being men who have sex with men or men who have sex with both men and women. This is not the, the full population, but uh, we have to remember that the, these populations are only those men who were uh, who, from which we detected an HPV 16 at the anal canal at one of the visits. And uh, the mean number of, of sexual partners, of female sexual partners, was lower in Mexico, also in comparison to the U.S. and Brazil. 
And so regarding the lineage prevalence, here we have the lineages, A, B, C, A European, uh, with the exception of A4 that was prevalent classified as Asian, B, C, which were prevalent characterized as African variants and Asian American variants. And we can see that regarding the distribution of lineages in the US, Brazil, and Mexico, most of the infections were of A lineage variants. However, we detected some non-A lineage variants, both in the US and in Brazil, but not in Mexico. And we detected B lineage variants in all of the countries. So regarding the persistence, uh, the Anal Canal, I will show you some conclusions because these are very big tables and I don't wanna go through this in this presentation. So we, this was the first study to prospectively evaluate the association between HPV-16 variants and, and viral persistence in the Mayo Island Canal. And uh, we found no significant difference regarding the distribution of HPV-16 variant among cases of persistent and transient infections, even when men were stratified by country, self-reported so ethnicity or age. But concerning the sexual orientation, we observed a significant higher prevalence of non avian lineage among men who had sex with men with a transient HPV-16 infection in the anal canal. We, don't have, we do not have a plausible explication for this. And, uh, uh, but however, we think this warranties further studies. Né? We think that we were not able to, to address, to find any association between variants and persistence of infection, which are necessary for the development of lesions, because uh, our cohort, uh, although bigger than the other studies, it's not big enough to find significant associations. So we believe larger studies are necessary to address these issues. We also analyzed the HPV-16 variability among these men in the genital region, and, but this was a, a, a much higher sample size because uh, uh, more men had a, a, at least one HPV-16 positive smear at the genital in, in any of these visits. So this analysis uh, included uh, 852 men, so 150, uh, uh, so 222 men from the U.S., 350. 40, 56 men from Brazil and to 214 men from Mexico. And these men contributed with at least one genital smear sample. Uh, but overall, uh, we analyzed almost 2,000 2, samples. Uh, that is because uh, although the most men had only one visit positive for HPV-16, which categorized transient infections, some of the men contributed to more than two uh, genital smears because they had a persistent infection with HPV-16 and they were positive in more than one visit. So uh, uh, similar to what uh, we observed for the anal canal, most of these men were young, were never smokers, were men who have sex with women, which reported over to the, uh, more than 12 years of education and having a steady sexual partner. Uh, in the same as the anal canal, most of the men detected with at least one HPV-16 positive genital sample were men who have sex with men or men who had sex with men and women in the Brazilian cohort in comparison to the United States and Mexico. So in this very nice slide, I show you the distribution and the prevalence of HPV-16 variants by country. So this is the overall prevalence, the prevalence in Mexico, in the United States, and in Brazil. We can observe that in all countries, A lineage variants were the most prevalent ones. Uh, with uh, to, being detected in 92% of these smears uh, from Mexican men. We also observed that non-A lineage variants were more prevalent in, the, in Brazil, and then in the United States and in Mexico, these were less detected. But we see in a very, uh, uh, very interesting thing that uh, regarding BC variants, which were prevalently defined as, as African, uh, where in Brazil, most of these variants were from the C lineage, 
In Brazil, in the United States, uh, the majority were from the B lineage. So we also sought to analyze it. There was a difference in the distribution of these of these variants among men who have persistent and transient infections. And so in this table, uh, I show you the association of HPV-16 variants and the persistence of infection at the genital region. So here are lineage A and non-A variants. We have to group these, the, these variants like this because, uh, because uh, we do not have too much uh, persistent infections. But mm -hmm. we can observe here in this slide, that infection with non-A lineage variants was associated with a higher relative risk of having a persistent infection. So this, if you remember, when we analyzed uh, women, uh, a line non-A lineage variants were associated with a higher risk, and in men, we see uh, some difference because A lineage variants are associated with a higher risk. We also analyzed the risk uh, regarding long-term persistent infections. And um, in this analysis, men with a, a persistent infection of less than 12 months were categorized together with transient infections. And we can observe that A lineage variants were also associated with a 2.69 uh, increased risk for having a persistent infection. In this study, some men develop uh, some genital warts and penile intraptilial neoplasia. And penile intraptilial neoplasia, we know that this is associated with HPV and skin infection. And these seven men who had developed a penile intraptilial lesion, two from the United States, two from Brazil, and three from Mexico. Here we describe the HPV type detected in biopsy of the samples of, the, of these lesions and also at the swab, uh, the surface of the swab, and we see that HPV-16 is, uh, is the cause of the development of these lesions. And in all these cases, we detected uh, uh, A1 sublineage variant. And here, uh, where it's uh, shown in bold, it's the moment uh, that this lesion was collected. And we see that all of these lesions, they develop uh, in, in the context of long-term persistent HPV-16 infection. So in conclusion, in men, we observed that HPV-16 lineage A variants are the most prevalent, independent of the country. We also see an uneven geographical distribution of HPV-16 variants in men. And in the Anno Canal, we were unable to detect a significant association of HPV-16 variants and persistence of infection. However, at genital samples, we show for the first time that among men, genital HPV-16 lineage A variant confer a higher risk for the develop for low grade for long-term infections, for persistent infections, and that all HPV-16 Penile and epithelial neoplasias had a sublineage A1 variant with cured in the constants of long term infections. So we see there are some differences uh, associated to gender in the, in the natural history of HPV 16 variants. And uh, we we want we think this should be analyzed in more details, but because although the HPV carcinogenesis is also all is often assumed to be similar between men and women and between different mucosal and no mucosal sites, it should be noted that the the keratinous keratinized epithelia of the penis may be different from that of the mucosal epithelial of the cervix. And indeed, uh, this study showed that there was a difference in the global expression of HPV-16 productive infections in, at the cervix, at the foreskin, and the tonsillar epithelial. So she, this should be further studied. I also want to finalize my presentation. I will talk uh, uh, the next five minutes about functional studies to which we have contributed in which we show there are also difference uh, in the different molecular variants of HPV-16. So as I told you earlier in this presentation, HPV-16, E6, and E7, they do not have an enzymatic activity, but however, they interact with different cellular proteins, and the association of this of both E6 and E7 with, with several cellular proteins, they impact upon uh, the different hallmarks 
of cancer. So we sought to analyze the difference of the lineage A and lineage G2 variants. I will not go into details of in, in these variants. And uh, we see that the E6 and E7 genes are very conserved. All the difference between A1, A lineage variants and D2 variants uh, in the E7 genes are conservative. That is, they don't lead to an alteration in the amino acid. However, these variants differ in three amino acid positions uh, within the E6 protein. So we, what we did is that uh, we constructed, uh, we constructed uh, vectors and we transduced keratinocytes with these, with these E6 and E7 from these different variants. And initially we performed uh, colony formation assays. So these are three different colony formation assays and the mean number of colonies that we counted. And we can see that regarding normal keratinocytes, which were non-transduced, uh, in, in one of the experiments, we were able to observe nine colonies. However, none of these colonies, they were able to grow until patient 30, where we considered the cells immortalized. They senesced much before. And regarding uh, samples transduced, uh, keratinocytes transduced with the FT vector, we did not observe any colony. And regarding A variant, A lineage variants and D2 lineage variants, uh, we observed that uh, these variants previously classified as Asian American, that means uh, that is D2 variants, they were able to form a higher number of colonies in comparison to A lineage variants. And also we observed that all of these colonies which were formed, they were able to to, to be mortalized. They were grown over passage P30, and we uh, at where we considered these cells as immortalized. On the other hand, A, A lineage transduced uh, keratinocytes, two of these colonies, they were not able to immortalize and they senesced near passage 20. We also assess the transformation ability of these keratinocytes, and these cells were grown in soft agar medium. And we observed in three different experiments that compared to the A lineage variants, non A lineage variants were associated uh, with a higher oncogenic potential because they were able to form more colonies in comparison to A lineage variants. We also assessed uh, MAP kinase silently in the samples, in these keratinocytes. And by Western blot, uh, uh, we observed that in cervical, that in extract from, from keratinocytes transduced with the D2 variant, we observe a higher levels of MAP kinase one phosphorylation, which also transduced in higher levels of ERK2 phosphorylation. And this was, a, was assessed by means of a proteomic uh, uh, a pro uh, an antibody array, and also uh, by an ELISA assay, we see higher levels of ERK phosphorylation. So we also perform, finally, we perform migrations assay by means of one healing assays. And we observed that the D2 variant was able to migrate uh, uh, more faster in comparison to the A lineage variants. And we also observed that when, when these cells were treated uh, with a MAP kinase inhibitor, uh, we observed that this uh, was attenuated suggesting the involvement of this signally pathway in the migration. So we, 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 we have made uh, some contributions to the analysis of HPV-16 variants, not also epidemiological, but also functionally. And uh, this is one of the lines of research in our lab. So finally, I would like to acknowledge my funding agencies, which is FAPESP, CNPK, and CAPES. I want to thank all the collaborators uh, of these studies in the Institute of Cancer of the State of Sao Paulo, especially Luisa Villa, who was my supervisor and was involved uh, in the coordination of the HIM study and the Magu, uh, Ludwig Magu study in Sao Paulo. Also to Milena Gonçalves, who performed all the analysis regarding the association of HPV-16 variants in the Anal Canal, and Matthew Ferreira, 
who, who made the analysis regarding genital samples, and also Rosanna, who performed the statistical analysis, and uh, Silvan Neji, who, who was a previous technician in our lab, and also to Jimena Hoshman, who was a PhD student in my lab, involved in some of these functional assays. I would also like to thank my collaborators in the, in the McGill University and in the Moffitt Cancer Center. I'm going to leave here my email. So if you have any questions or if you come to Brazil and have the opportunity to come here and would like to, 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 to see our institution and to know the lab, I am available. Please do not hesitate to write to me. I thank you very much for hearing me.